Hello, good morning. Today I'm gonna talk about the contactor and of course the contactor coil. I'm gonna tell you how it works. We're gonna measure some voltage. We're gonna troubleshoot and we're gonna replace one. So don't go anywhere, I'll be right back. Uh, contactors in AC uh, there are many kinds of contactors but for residential contactors there are two main types double pole and single pole double pole are these ones and I'm gonna show you they have both the right and the left side they're activated by this plunger so when you press on that, it gets activated both at the same time. The single pole is only one side. As you could see here, the one on, the, on this side, when you press, this and this get connected through the plunger in the middle. While the one on the left is always on, it's always connected there's nothing to stop the path of the electricity here and some uh, condensers use this uh, for the crankcase so uh, the crankcase is in the compressor and there's a system to keep the uh, oil warm and always ready to go when you turn the compressor on so when the thermostat calls for cool it's gonna send 24 volts to the control board and then the control board is gonna send uh, 24 volts to the coil. When the contactor makes, it's gonna depress these contacts right here. The right on the left, this is a double pole. So both poles, that means that 120 and 120 are gonna go and they are gonna energize the compressor and the fan. Now let's talk about continuity. This is my single pole and as remember we said that this one is always on. So I have, let's do a continuity test and it should be on at all the time. So when I put my lead, I have one on this side and when I touch this, we should hear the sound of the, the continuity. So that's on. That's always on because there's no restriction here. There's no plunger. So now let's try this one here. So we have one lead on one side and then the other one I'm gonna put it there and there is nothing because the plunger is not depressed remember uh, it, we are not calling for cool when we call for cool remember there's 24 volts it's gonna pull the plunger in it's gonna suck it up and then it, it's gonna do this and then we're gonna have continuity So we are outside the house and this is the condenser unit. You have to learn to identify what is what. So as we get closer, uh, let's identify. Uh, remember I told you that this, the contactor coil works with uh, 24 volts and the wire that comes from inside from the air handler from your furnace, it's gonna be a wire just like this and it comes in into the unit and in this case it's only two screws so I'm gonna grab the door and then pull back pull out um, the contactor coil is fed by two wires that come from the letter C and the letter Y as you could see that uh, that one is uh, the C is a white and the uh, why it's red and from there it goes from there that's my wire and it goes all the way to the condenser outside so 24 volts come from these two from the black I'm sorry from the white and the red usually at the unit come with the blue and the yellow wires and each the yellow wire goes to one side of the coil and the blue the blue wire 
goes to the other side of the uh, coil uh, 24 volts is gonna push and activate the coil uh, we know that 240 volts come from the breaker box and then they're gonna continue if this is the on position the power is gonna continue through this through this conduit and if you see these two wires so now we see that 240 volts are here on L1 and L2 now on T1 and T2 we're gonna have more wires and if you follow the wires these wires come from the compressor come from the uh, the fan motor on top so this is the fan motor so the wires come from there and then they are gonna come from uh, through here through this hole And now uh, our unit is running. So now that our unit is working, we should have 240 volts there. And we do. And then if we switch, we switch it on top, we should read as well 240 volts because really all, all it is is 200 volts coming from down here to up here. And that's the whole purpose of the contactor just for allowing the electricity to go by through it when you call for cool so to replace it let's make sure that there's no power so we're gonna pull our switch disconnect and then uh, make sure it's on top of it that way you know that it's not on and we have to make sure that the thermostat is not calling for cooling. So you're gonna place uh, your coil in the ups, upright position, and then you're gonna disconnect whatever, let's start with the right side. So whatever, whatever wires you remove from this side, you're gonna put them on this side. So, Let's start with these red ones. I'm gonna remove this one. And then I'm gonna put it on this side because it goes on my right side. And then the other one, we're gonna remove it. A needle nose pliers help a lot. So pull up and then you're gonna put it in the same side. These are your red wires. And that's it. And now the black wires that are on the left side, they are gonna go on the left of the, on the, on the new one. So this black wire is gonna go on the left side, and then the other one is gonna go on the left. And then we have our coil wires and remember to turn the thermostat off because otherwise if you touch these two wires it's gonna be a direct short and then you have to replace your transformer. So we're gonna remove our yellow one and we're gonna put it on the left and then the blue one we're gonna put it on the, the right. So that's the coil. And now all we have to do is the power that comes from here. So we're gonna disconnect this wire and we're gonna put it on the left. And then the other wire, we're gonna put it on the right. It doesn't matter which one is which, but we're gonna uh, keep the um, direction of, of how it was before. And now that you place the wires at the lower part and you have everything as you had it before, we're gonna put back the screws to secure the contactor and then your unit is gonna be ready uh, to be fired up. So 
After that, you can connect the switch and call for cooling up in the thermostat. So, if you don't have 240 volts here, go back and look into the switch disconnect and the breakers or and the wire. If you have 240 volts here on L1 and L2 and we have 24 volts across the coil but you don't have 240 volts here on T1 and T2 then something is wrong with the contactor and you should replace it. If you have 24 volts in the coil across the coil but it's not depressing the plunger it's not making the contacts then you should replace it if you uh, when you when you test for ohms if you don't have 10 to 20 ohms then you should replace it because it's gonna fail soon if your contactor is noisy if there's a uh, noisier than usual and um, the coil might be going bad or the contacts might not be 100% uh, contact with the other surface you should replace it you could fix it but I, I don't I don't advise that these are 10 to 20 dollars so instead of playing with it just replace it because it's, it might save you another trip later on nowadays they protect the contacts by putting this cover here but you're gonna see a lot of them that they, they are still exposed and uh, if you see the contacts here sometimes dirt or bugs uh, fall in between the plates of the contact and that avoids that the contacts make a hundred percent contact and that's why uh, the contactor might be failing okay so let's troubleshoot and this is a simple device but in order to understand troubleshooting you have to f know what's going on what's behind um, now remember there is 240 volts coming on L1 and on L2 on the contactor right and we know that there is 24 volts on the coil right but le let me take you all the way back so we have a breaker box and there is a double pole breaker so 240 volts come out of the breaker box and they go to the switch disconnect okay and here is where you can stop the power or you can when you remove it then there's no power from here to here but when you push it back in then power 240 volts are going to continue coming to your condensing unit now um that power the 240 are gonna be standing by when they're gonna be standing by right there just waiting for the thermostatic core for cool so um, so when you're troubleshooting you have to put your two leads here and if they are 240 volts then we're good you don't have to do anything but if there's nothing then you have to go back and see if there are 240 volts here if there are 240 volts here then something's wrong in between here but then go back if there's 240 volt here and not here there is something wrong with this one but if there's nothing here there's no if there is no 240 volt then you have to go back to the breaker remove the cover of the breaker box and measure between uh, uh, the two screws to make sure that there's 240 volts okay so that's one side the 240 volt now we have the other side so now let's go back to the thermostat uh, right here at your thermostat you call for cooling and then R, Y and G are gonna make and they're gonna send the power to the control board uh, if the control board is working fine it's gonna send the power through the Y and the C and remember the wire I show you and that's gonna be to the coil of the contactor uh, some contactors have the coil on one side and some others like the ones I show you like, like this one one side here and the other one on the other side then the contactor 
it's gonna make and then power is gonna go to my compressor and to my fan and to my um, capacitor if there if you don't have 24 volts here then you have to go back uh, sometimes the brown wire you saw by my condensing unit when you cut your grass you use your weed eater and you break it and you don't know what's going on sometimes your um, transformer that is here is shot because these two wires got together and they made a short so you have to trace back uh, on the wires that goes to your from your control board to the contactor coil and if you have 24 you might not your thermostat might not be working so you have to make sure that your thermostat works because this send the signal to this and these to the um, 24 volts to the contactor coil so as I said in order to troubleshoot you have to have the basic knowledge of the whole thing so that's it for today guys I hope you liked it and I hope you it, it was beneficial I hope it was beneficial for you I hope you learned something today um, don't forget to like and subscribe and see you next video.